Okay. Awesome. We are live. Okay. So Khalil, last night I sent you a text basically saying that I was on a phone with a client and they asked a really good question on texting leads, right? Because I know texting leads is like the main way that you like to kind of give quotes, get people scheduled in that way. But the client asked if it was better to kind of be more upfront with pricing, meaning give it, I guess, right off the bat or within the first couple of texts, or if it would be better to kind of warm them up to giving the price, meaning asking more questions, feeling them out a little bit better. What are your thoughts on that, Khalil? Yep. Great question. I love it. So let's kind of peel it back just a little bit and let's, you know, talk about, you know, sales, rapport building and all of that stuff. And then we'll kind of move into the texting aspect and my thoughts on the, the exact question. So okay. whenever it comes to sales, you know, rapport is going to be huge and rapport. When people mention that it's like such a surface level thing that it's kind of like, Oh yeah. I build rapport, get somebody to like me. They should know my whole family story. And that's wrong. If you're the salesperson, you should not be talking about yourself at all. Whenever it comes to rapport, and the way the easiest way that I can explain rapport, especially whenever it comes to sales, is you know, you can walk into some place and build rapport with somebody. Just hey, how's it going? Me and you right now, I could be building rapport. How's it going? What do you do for a living? All of that stuff is nonsense BS rapport building. That's not actually rapport building. Rapport building and warming up with somebody in sales typically happens face-to-face, one-on-one, or you with a a husband, wife, or a couple, whatever it may be, and there's levels to it. And I would say there's like level one, two, and three. Level one is the, hey, how's it going? My name's Khalil. Your name's Salvador. The basic stuff. The basic stuff. Level two would be like finding something they like and talking about it. For example would be like if you're with somebody and you find out that they're a gardener or if you're with somebody and find out that they play guitar or for this industry, if you're chatting with somebody and you find out that not only do they own a Corvette, but they're a collector of them. And the one that they're talking to you about is one of six. So Can I that add would be that? more. You Aaron, yes, go ahead. I, I want to add to that level three. Not yet, not yet, Aaron, not yet. Okay, later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, not yet, not yet. Love it. Eric. So like like I was saying, level two would be finding out that they're a collector. And a lot of times people at that point would stop with the rapport building. And they'll just kind of be like, okay, cool. That's, that's great that you have six Corvettes. And then they'll go back to maybe the ceramic coating, maybe the pricing, whatever it may be. And they stop at level two. And that's a big problem, especially if you're in face-to-face sales. But if you're over the phone, it'll be a little bit different. But let's keep it for face-to-face for right now. Level three warm-up is where the sale is made. Not level two, level one. Level two and level one is where it's going to get lost. Level three is where you're going to make it. And level three, the way that I could describe it, going back to like the gardener or the guitar player, is going out to the garden with them and having them show you the garden. Have them pick a tomato for you to Mm. eat. That's level three warm up. Sitting down with the person who plays guitar and getting them to teach you how to play two or three notes on the guitar. That's level three warm up. Now, for this, you're face to face with somebody, they bring in a nice, I don't know, GTR or Corvette or something. Level two warm up. Hey, how do you like the car? Where'd you get it? How long have you had it? Oh, that's cool. What made you buy it? Level three would get would be getting them to take you on a ride in it. And if you want to go over the top, they let you drive it fast. <laughs> that is actual rapport building warm up. So whenever you texted me yesterday and you were like, you know, is it best to warm up? That is my like definition, description of actual rapport building. 
So just so going to recap, it's more of like immersing yourself in exactly, you know, their interests, what they do for work, really kind of, I guess, going deeper with them on, on their interests. So personally, I, I hate talking to somebody about what, what work they do, because the problem is, is especially in this industry, we're trying, you know, we're offering luxury services. A lot of times you're going to be dealing with, you know, top income people, doctors, lawyers, other types of top industry leaders. And typically those types of people, whenever they get asked, what do they do for a living? And they drive a nice car. They think you're like sizing them up and you're going to try to overcharge. So for that, I try to stay away from like talking about what they do for a living. Whereas if you find somebody who, let's say, for example, they're nothing wrong with it, but a truck driver, they're going to love talking to you about truck driving. But a doctor's not really going to want to talk to you about being a doctor. Yeah. So what would be some good ways to kind of find those little pieces of like their interests or like how, how would you get out? How would you get that out of them initially? We got such a good foot in the door with what we do as a service. Like you're talking to them about their car. Like they wouldn't have bought it and they won't pay monthly on it if they didn't like it. Like me and my wife have literally been in an argument for like the past 14 months because she hated the fact that I was paying on a car that she drove that she hated. Like, don't talk to her about the car, but the car I bought her now, she'll talk to you about it all day long, all day long because she loves it and she's cool with making the payment on it. And it's not like, for me, it's just like, I'm a detailer, right? Like bring me a Lambo or something. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. But for that person, that's their bait, especially if they're going to do a coding PPF, any type of, luxury service even if it's a grand cherokee if they're putting this type of thing on it ppf coding window tent any type of thing like that that's it's a really is it a need yes does the vehicle need it yes does it have to have it in order for the vehicle to function no so in some ways it is a want and people do need to have the disposable income to spend on it so that they'll be happy with it. So for that, for this, it, we got an easy foot in the door, man. It's their car. Where'd you get it? How long have you had it? What made you buy it? Ask questions and layer the questions like, oh, you know, I really bought this Jeep because I like to go mountain biking. Boom. I'm no longer talking about the car. That is such a good point. That I'm talking about point. the mountain bike. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, so do you like mount the bike on the back of the Jeep? Yeah. Where's your favorite trail? Boom. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in, dude. Oh, man. And like, if, like, what Khalil just described is kind of like that branch off, you know, you start with the car, you branch off to like their interests, mountain biking, whatever it is. But if it's like, say it doesn't branch off to that other interest and it's just about the vehicle. Asking those important questions is very key that you just mentioned. What are you can also ask? You can also ask them. What? Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, like, what are like some other ways to kind of get them, or what are some other questions to kind of help them see that you know this is their baby? Like, hey, you know, you want to get this protected. You want to make it look like it's new again. Yep. So it's how long have you had it? Okay, cool. What made you buy it? What was your favorite part about the, the vehicle? What, what, what's your favorite part about the vehicle? Oh, I really like the way that it drives. Okay, cool. Like, is it smooth? Like, have you, did you put a lift on it? Like, are there rims? Like, and, and especially for trucks, like here in Texas, I ask every truck owner, like, is there a lift kit? Is there rims? They're and if they say, <laughs> yeah, it's like a given here in Texas. Like, yeah. You message me that you got a diesel truck. It's like, okay, how big is the lift and how big are the rims? Like, so, so that is just like, you know, a lot of compliments, you know, if you're over the phone with them, a lot of compliments. Oh, that's awesome. You know, how big are the rims? Did you pick it? Did you buy it like that? Oh, that's pretty cool. So like, and if they say like, no, I didn't buy it like this. I went and I got it all custom put on. Wow. So you got to pick out the lift kit, the rims, like, So this is your build and like almost make it seem like they've now like really put in a lot of hard work into the vehicle 
even if they haven't really done much to it. Okay, how long have you had the vehicle? Six months. Great. Do you take it through tunnel washes? No. Can you see any scratches or swirls? No. Wow. So it sounds like you really take care of the vehicle then. Do you hand wash it? What? Oh, I got to commend you. You're, you're doing that on the weekends? Sheesh. How yeah. long does that take? And they may tell, they're going to tell you two hours. Well, I'm not going to hit them back with, well, ceramic coating will make it 30 minutes. No. I'm going to put that in my pocket. I'm going to wait till we're out of this phase. And then we're going to get into the, the pricing and the process and the benefits. So real quick, how long do you stay in that rapport building phase? Like As long you, as they'll allow me. Okay. Do you, do you purposely try to make it last as long as it can? Or do you kind of say, hey, you know, after five minutes, you know, we should be done with that. We can transition to the other part. It depends, right? You may get somebody on the phone that you're the, especially if they're an older person, single, living at home, and they collect a Corvette and they don't really have anybody to talk to. I may be the first person that's asked them about their car in the past year. And if yeah. they want to, and if that's their baby and they want to like spill the beans and give me all the information on it, I'm telling you, the longer that you stay in that warm up phase and it's going good, if yeah. it's getting weird, you got to yeah. get out. <laughs> okay. Abort okay. mission, yeah. abort mission. <laughs> if, it, if you're having like a lot of weird silences and, you know, abort mission, get out, get out, go back to pricing, give them the price and hang up the phone. That's a good point. So you're saying that if you run into those walls with that person, they're stone cold, you just give them the price up front. Not necessarily. You, you know, even whenever the people are stone cold and they want the price. And e even this morning, I had somebody comment on on one of my things like, why isn't there pricing here? Blah, 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 blah. Like, you need to be telling us pricing up front so we can know what we're dealing with. My first immediate thought is, one, you're not my customer. Two, you probably can't afford it. Yeah. And, and then I even direct message them. It's like, Hey, did you want to quote? Like, sorry that, you know, what you saw on my page didn't, you know, please you, but did you want to quote? And they were like, no. So it's like, great. You weren't my customer. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's it, not somebody you would have done business with anyway. Yeah. And whenever they're stone cold like that, it's, it's important. A lot of people will just give them the price. But for me, I got to slow them down and I got to regain control of the conversation or they're going to think that this entire way through, they're in control. Mm. And they can they can think that and they, you know, it's I'm pleasantly persistent and, and courteous, but they need to understand that you may just want the price. But there's a couple of things that I got to understand because I haven't seen your vehicle. Like I and I'll tell people that it's like, yeah. You know, they'll hit me. Hey, I put my information in and uh, it didn't give me a price. What's the price? I'll just respond back. Hey, absolutely. I appreciate you reaching out. Uh, I just got a couple of quick questions so I can itemize your quote and give you the, the most accurate quote without having seen the vehicle. Okay. And so then, you're letting them know that you're going to be asking more questions, either yep. on a phone call or text to yep. help, help you see what they have in the driveway. Yep, exactly. And you know, and if you want to, you could throw something in there. I need you to be my eyes for me real quick so I can give you the best quote and it saves both of us time. I don't need you to drive all the way up here. You could just tell me the description of the vehicle and it saves us both time. Because what a lot of people, and, and that's the, if you throw that out there, that can eliminate the objection of like, I don't have time to go back and forth with you. It's like, well, sir, ma'am, I just told you, like, I'm going to give you the quote. Yeah, just give me but some more information. I just need to know, do you see scratches you want removed? Oh my like, God, that's such a good question because what we've talked about in the past for anybody that is newer is we want them to basically, like we want to hear from them. Like they, you want them to describe their pain condition. And then if they say it's flawless, but it's like a 09 or a 09 k Optima, right? It's like, we obviously know that's not going to be flawless paint but to them right it shines here and there in the sun but it's obviously not soil mark free yep yeah, and, is... and and with that i'll handle that type of thing on the back end whenever they bring me the vehicle and what i mean by mm. that is if they tell me like for example i had somebody do a, a, i remember this black 2012 toyota tundra hundred thousand miles on it the guys you know and 
for a lot of vehicles, people take pride in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So they'll tell you like, oh, I bought this vehicle brand new. I've done nothing but take immaculate care for it. It's in great condition. No, no swirling, no scratches. And you get it. And it's like, dude, did you think that all of this was factory metallic flake that just goes in circles <laughs> or, or what's the deal here? And, and I'll handle that on the back end. And I'll just tell them, Hey, you know, based on what you told me, this is the quote that I gave you, but you do see your car has a lot of swirling. Like I had a Mercedes 2016 Mercedes E class the other day. And a couple of my guys were in the shop. Guy opens the door whenever he pulls in. And I'm like, yeah, man, let's just take a look at it under the lights. I'll do a quick test spot because this guy was very particular. I want to make sure the package I'm getting is going to remove the swirls. And I just told him, okay, here's the package. This is what we'll start with. Each additional correction step would cost this much. And I overpriced it. And I wanted him to come in. So he gave me the deposit, scheduled an appointment with at least the level one to be done. So I said, great. As soon as he pulled in, I opened the door, said, hey, how's it going? I'm Khalil. If you don't mind, just give me 10 minutes with the vehicle. I'm going to do a quick test spot and I'm going to show you what the level one result will be. And then you can tell me whether you want to move to two or three. And he said, yeah, cool. No worries. There's not a lot of swirls on the vehicle. Dude, I wish I probably have a picture, but there was like on the trunk. It looked like the guy washed the car like Mr. Miyagi wax on wax off with sandpaper with like with a dish towel dude <laughs> sandpaper is easier to get out than this oh, like man. It, it was so bad and even my guys that were in the shop work and they laugh because they're like didn't this guy just say that there wasn't very many swirls so with that particular case brought the guy back out hey here's level one here's level two here's level three and that face-to-face -face interaction while I was taking the 10 minutes to do the car and stuff, I was warming up with him, building rapport, asking him questions. Him and his wife drove the same car, one black, one white. Are you guys obsessed with Mercedes? Or like, what's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just built a little rapport. And to me, the car was still like, it, it wasn't perfect condition paint whenever I was done with it. But whenever I showed him the two test results, I upsold him to a level two. But the way that I sold it was I price conditioned him at double the amount that it was going to cost to move to level two. So, for example, I told him level one was a thousand. If he wanted to move to level two, it's fourteen hundred. Level three is eighteen hundred. But whenever he came, I told him, hey, I'll do the level two for twelve hundred. So I cut it in half by two hundred bucks. I'm still making money. I'm still profitable. It's a small car. And he was already conditioned that it was going to be four hundred dollars additional where I, then he he saw it as I gave him a 50% discount at $200 to add it. And he went with it. He was like, cool. Yep. Let's do it. I love that. Okay. Perfect paint. Just to recap, you're not like trying to convince the, the lead that their vehicle is in perfect condition, depending on how they describe it on the phone. That's something you'd rather do in person when you're able to kind of show them what you're seeing under lights, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And selling and the, the paint correction, which is perfect, man. That is beautiful. And, Every time, I kid you not, every time the client shows up to my shop for the drop-off, three minutes of complimenting the vehicle. Oh, my God, this vehicle's amazing. I love these things. How long have you had it? That's awesome. Maybe the wife's dropping it off, and I talk to the husband, or the husband's dropping it off, and I talk to the wife. So now I'm just building some rapport. So when they are leaving me the second largest investment that they make, they need to trust me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I build a little rapport and then I lay it to him hard. The package you have signed up for is not going to correct all of the imperfections I'm seeing in your vehicle right here. Cause my shop doesn't have any shade. So whenever they pull up their car is in direct sunlight, like bang, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Cause sometimes, you know, you're delivering the vehicle and you're like, man, if there was just a little overcast right yeah. now, <laughs> yeah, this, this would look great. Look beautiful. Yeah. 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 So so it's, it's good because it gives me a good place to inspect the vehicle. And before they get picked up by their Uber, or they leave. I, I set the expectation very proper where I'm going to under promise and over deliver. So I'll ask them, is there any specific things on the vehicle that you need, that you want to make sure get removed scratches, the cup holder scratches, whatever, or the door 
up scratches yeah. is there anything specific that you want to make sure gets removed and if they show me anything some people like scuff the front of the bumper sometimes on like a shopping cart sometimes it'll come out sometimes it won't like sometimes those scratches can be pretty deep so i'll just say okay great you know it dep- with the package you have that's probably not all going to come out but then i want their customer experience to be great so i tell them so what i'll do is i'll pay a little bit extra attention to this spot here it won't be any extra charge just to see how much i can get out and to them they're just like heck yeah now they feel like they're getting a win they're getting a win i'm giving them more than what they signed up for initially yeah. And then I just set them straight with, hey, the vehicle has, especially, you know, if you see the scratch pass, you know, little barcode thing that they got the, the monthly subscription to, you got to let them know, like, the vehicle's not going to be a mirror finish whenever you pick it up, especially if it's a 2019 and you've been taking it through the, the tunnel wash and all you signed up for was a one step paint correction. Like, that's not all coming out. I don't care who you are, what product you're using. If you're doing a true one step, you're not getting anything. Like you're not getting all of that out. You're restoring a lot of gloss and a lot of clarity and removing very, very light scratches and swirling. But if they have heavy scratches, heavy swirling, you just got to let them know, hey, all that's not going to come out for the most part, maybe 30 percent. But what you're going to get the most bang for out of this is it's going to be very, very shiny, very glossy. And then you're going to have that coating that's going to protect it. And I have never had a customer say. Well, I don't want to leave my vehicle then because the whole way through, I've been setting the proper expectations. You need to be the eyes for me. What does the vehicle look like? If they say it's not a lot of scratches and then they come and it's a lot of scratches, well, Mr. Jones, based on what you told me, you said it wasn't a lot of scratches. And I got to say, man, it looks like you've been washing this thing with a broomstick. <laughs> so Wait, it's not going to come out. If the client's cool with like, like you set the proper expectations and they're cool with it. And they know that, you know, the one step isn't going to remove everything, but they're cool with it. They like the price. You still just book them in at that package. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you don't, you're not like, no, I won't touch this because it won't be perfect when I'm done with it. Nope. 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 Because I'm a lot of times, man, like even this guy with this Mercedes that like, I would say I took about 70% of his swirls out, but it was still swirled. Like, it wasn't like you had to really, like, look hard to find the swirls. Like, they were still there. And when the guy picked up, he was blown away. Blown away. Yeah. And me and the guys working in the shop were like, "Mm." yeah, I wish that he would have paid for the extra step. It would have looked way better. But to the normal, everyday consumer that does not do this for a living, they're not going to see the light swirls. That's yeah. why when you ask them, can you see swirls? 90% of the time they tell you no. And it's not true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I think, yeah, it goes back to report building and setting proper expectations, making sure you give them what they want without basically over-promising, under-delivering, right? You want to have it the other way around. Yep. But now let's, I know that that was a long roundabout way to get back to the original question of, Texting. Yeah. So texting is, you're not going to build a lot of rapport. So I'll tell you right now, you're not going to have the 25, 1800, 1750 price point through a text message. Unless they've talked to 37 other detailers that told them it was $2,500 and you texted them and told them it's 1800. But the ch- there's not 37 detailers at the price point of 2,500. Right. So you're, that's very, very hard to have a very high average dollar on the texting. Okay. Now, now, what you can do is you can do a lot of volume with it. And that's where I try to angle my business is one thing I learned in my sales career. One thing that keeps me happy and healthy is closing. And I want to close. I want to have my shop full. And for me, I'm a one man show. So like I have to be able to have enough time to do the work, the service, provide a five star experience and book enough deals to like keep me busy. So the texting is the route that works for me. 
Now, my average sale price is a little bit lower, but I would argue that I'm doing a lot of volume in comparison to a lot of people that have a higher average sales ticket. Yeah, in, yeah. In terms of number of cars. I think last month, last month I did 33 ceramic coatings all by myself. Yeah. So 33 last month, it was 36 the month before and 41 the month before that. So I do, I, you know, I install a lot of coatings and my average sales ticket is a little lower, but I'm closing every day. Every day I'm closing. Every day yeah. I'm booking new business. And that's what keeps my mental like straight. There are some people that they want to sit there and hunt for the $1,800 job and they'll close one or two a week. I would go insane doing that. I'd go insane. And you, it's a lot of time on the phone. I don't have a lot of time. I do not have a lot of time on the phone. Like right now, like I'm in my car talking to you to do the yeah. call, like, cause I have, I had to go grab lunch and like, I got to get back and do some stuff. So it, it's, I need the time. So the texting allows me to have time because if they, if they're going to take 10 minutes to get back to me, cool. That gives me 10 minutes to get, get something done. But it's important that when the customer gets back to you, you respond, you get right back to them. Don't let them wait, but you're not going to build a lot of rapport. So through the text message, it's always going to come in the, in, in, the, in the scope of what's the price. I put my information in. I didn't get the price. We send the confirmation text. So a lot of times like, yep, that's correct. What's the price? So just got to let them know. Hey, appreciate the interest. Just got a couple of quick questions so I can give you an accurate quote. What color is the vehicle? And I just need to slow them down. Slow them down. We're not getting to the price yet. And the most important thing for a text message sale is to know if they're familiar with ceramic coating or not. If they're not familiar with ceramic coating, you cannot give them the price. You could tell them it's $300. You could tell them it's $150. They'll think it's too much, no matter what, because they have no earthly idea what they're buying. Yeah, that's like, a good point. They're like, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So some people may say that Oakley... Oakley sunglasses are expensive. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I actually need to go buy a new pair of sunglasses. Like I've broke like the past six of them and not like broke, but I've lost pieces to them because my son tore them all up. Very upset with him. I had six <laughs> pairs, but Oakley, like the glasses, like won't break. Like you could step on them in the, in the, the ear pieces just come off. The nose pieces come off. The lenses will pop right out. Like, and if it does break, you could send it to Oakley and get it, get a replacement. And people will say, oh, Oakley is expensive, but they also don't know what they're buying behind Oakley. Like Oakley is also one of the only brands with the lens that like if you're using like a drill and a rock pops up, it won't break the glass. Or if you're weed eating or something like that, it won't break the lens. Like they have a special like technology in their lens. But yeah. if you don't know that, you're going to think, Oakley's too expensive. I'm going to go to the gas station and get the $12 pair of glasses. Well, I have a couple of pairs of those and they're junk. They don't even fit your face right. Yeah. So no matter what, you need to find out, are they familiar with the product you're offering? And if the answer is no, then you need to step back from rapport building. You need to step back from pricing. You need to step back from all of that. And you need to step into education. I need to explain to them what the coding doesn't do, what it will do, and then reconfirm that this is what they are looking for. And then I can give them a price. Beautiful. Because if I don't do that, out. Yeah, you can tell them it's a hundred bucks. They're not buying. You're getting ghosted. Know. Yeah. You're getting ghosted. It doesn't matter. You can tell them it's free. They still won't come like to the shop to get it done because <laughs> they still, they don't know what it is. Yeah. And, and this also goes, goes to bring that full circle. If they are unfamiliar with what you're offering and then they do say, yes, there are people out there that just like see the shiny car and they say yes. And they want to get it done. You shoot them the package, whatever. And they just got income tax or just hit the lottery and they just want to blow money but their expectation of what you're providing, they don't know. And as detailers or salespeople, sometimes we'll be like, oh man, that was, that was a lay down, such an easy sale. 
but that person probably doesn't know what they're actually getting. And in my opinion, that will lead to a complaint in the future because they don't know what they bought or what it does. So they'll call you expectations. Yep. They'll call you and be like, oh my God, I thought I'd never have to wash my car again. Why is my car dirty after three months? Yeah. Or why are there water spots? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, okay, clearly you weren't, you weren't fully informed on what I sold you, which is my fault. My fault. It's not the customer. It's my fault. So either you fix it for them or you have to re-educate them and explain to them what they did get. And that's not what I want to do. So I want to handle that up front. And through the text message, education is more important than the rapport building. Then once you're in face with them, face-to-face, they said yes, whatever, you schedule a meet time, that's when you overload the rapport building so they trust you. And when they hand the keys over to you, and then they come and pick up, it's a, oh, my God, it looks amazing. Thank you so much. You did great. I love it. And then they're, like, texting you three days later, like, saying how much they love the product. And they're fully educated. They know exactly what they got. Okay, so say a lead comes in, and they're like, hey, you know, I'm looking to just book right away. Love your pricing. but I just want to get on the schedule. No questions asked. Just put me on the schedule. Do you then go ahead and set those ex expectations after they book via text or phone call or do you wait until the vehicle's in person what expectations are you talking about exactly like them not knowing what the coding can and can't do just yep. checking with them so i do it both i do it up front whenever they talk to me on the phone in the beginning and then whenever they bring the vehicle again i confirm the package what it's going to do what what we're doing to the vehicle how long it's going to take what time they can pick and i go through it all over again because again, if, I, if I'm booked out three weeks and I talked to them three weeks ago, took the deposit, sent them a text message last night, hey, reminder, be here 930. They, dude, they, people are busy. They got lives, they got jobs, they got kids, they got families, they got soccer practice. Like they bought off of emotion and impulse and it was a good price. They can afford it. They want to do it. And they bought. Great. Now, it's up to me that whenever they come to drop off, I slow them down again. Hey, this is what it's going to be. And then at, when they pick it up again, I tell them the coating is good for five years. No waxes, no sealants, nothing like that for the next five years. Don't put anything on it without asking me first. No tunnel washes, pH neutral soap. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. Here's a website that you're more than welcome to go buy some products off of that I, I know will be safe for the ceramic coating. And you won't go wrong with so and I and you know answer any questions that they have right there and then overall the experience just needs to be on point and if if your if your rapport is on point and a lot of times some people what they're looking for is just like a professional person and that goes a long way but get to know them a little bit and that rapport whenever they drop the vehicle off or you get to their their spot for a mobile you know, build some rapport. Don't just be like, okay, great. Give me your keys. Go inside. Like, Hey, this is a gorgeous house. How long have you been here? Oh, that's awesome. I love this neighborhood. What's your favorite part about the house? Like, I love the way that it looks. I love the front door. Like give them compliments. People love their house. People love their car. And you can build a lot of rapport. I used to do in-home sales for a living. Like you can build a lot of rapport on somebody's front porch, just based on like a flag that they have in their front yard off a garden bed. Did you, plant these things yourself like oh you got a green thumb i can't keep a cactus alive like (laughs) there's a lot of rapport you can build with people face to face based off of a shirt that they're wearing they got a harley davidson shirt on ask them about it ask them about it they got a a soccer team shirt people are walking billboards for the things that they like and if you talk to them about that that's how you build rapport whereas if you're talking about yourself or things you like or not talking to them at all. Yeah, you, they don't care one bit. Cool. Okay, awesome. So I'll go ahead and open it up to open floor Q&A. We have Miguel, Patrice, and Daniel in here. So if you guys have any questions, either about this topic or something else, please go ahead and unmute yourselves. I'm going to go ahead and ask Miguel, you just turned on your camera, so I'll go ahead and ask you to unmute first. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you, Miguel? Good, good. No, I, I agree with everything he said. I mean, everything sounds professional and, you know, 
I had like I had a couple of customers also ask me, you know, when I because I mainly focus on a PPF. We don't, I don't haven't done too many ceramic coatings yet, but I mean, so far I've had about three customers that came in. They're happy with the PPF, and I also tell them about the rock chips and scratches. If if you see rock chips on the hood, you know, if you want to get it repaired before we apply it or not, you know. So I let everyone know exactly what they're getting before, you know, or they what they have to do to the car in order for it to come out flawless, you know. Got it. Awesome. Do you have any questions about like either rapport building or kind of warming them up before giving quotes or shooting? Well, off the I, I, I like I like to everyone to come and bring the car. So I, I like to see the car in person before I even try to give them an exact price. You know, I could give them a, an idea of what it could cost at the end of the day I, I like to see the car in person that way if there's any scratches underneath the bumper from parking spot stops or anything like that you know that's not going to stick the ppf is not going to stick to that you know so it just depends on on how the, the condition of the car is got it awesome man thank you so much for joining us i'll go ahead and see if daniel or patrice have questions they'd like to ask sure. but thank you man thank you for joining of course patrice i saw you earlier man I know you're here. He might be busy. Daniel, do you have any questions? I know we talked yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Patrice, how are you, man? Yo, my bad, bro. I'm working right now. I'll, I'll, go, ahead, I'll go ahead and let Patrice Okay, speak. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Good to you. Patrice, you're cutting you're cutting out heavily. Can you can you hear and see us? September right now. Out of here and uh, see if he can hear me a bit better. Okay. Yeah, can you yeah, hear yeah. me better? Yes. Okay. Yes. How's it going? Yeah, man? we're uh, oh, it's going good, man. We're booking in September right now. God dang. So yeah. <laughs> do you want to tell people your average ticket price? Because I know initially when we uh, launched your campaign, uh, average ticket price is between 15 to 18. We do get a lot of $2,500 ticket sales right now. Nice, man. Congrats. I'm very, that dude, I'm happy for you. That Give makes me a second. Me... I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. It's cutting a lot. I'll get, I'll. Uh... I'll try to get rid of the video here. Okay. Maybe it'll be better. Yeah, we can hear you better. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Congrats, man. You said that it was okay, fifteen good. to $1,800? Yeah, that's the average. We're, we're booking sometimes a 2000 to 2500 one. And as you know, we do PPF. Oh, I just had a call today I for a, uh, a Corvette C7. <laughs> Took me about 15, 20 minutes to book the whole car, the full full body PPF. So it's nice. People yeah. people calling him right now. Like I said, we're we're in September. So one started yesterday, one started today. So we're yeah. we're gonna be going full blown on expansion. So dude, I'm so happy to hear, man. You said that you were did you say you were yeah. hiring two people? I missed that part. Yes, we hired two people already. So the uh, one started yesterday and the other one started this morning. And we are in the midst of maybe doing a joint venture with another uh, detail shop so that we can have a business partner come. So we can even take even more expansion. Dude, congratulations, man. I definitely want to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. Dude. That's insane. Yeah. By the way, Miguel. Yeah, Patrice, we're pushing. We're pushing hard. <laughs> dude, that makes me happy to hear. By the way, Miguel, Patrice does PPF also, so he's very experienced with selling PPF. You know, overcoming any roadblocks. So I'll definitely have to connect you two to see. You know, get some ideas yeah. bouncing between you guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate everybody's time. Khalil, thank you so much. Miguel, Patrice, and Daniel, thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Okay, okay. Cool. Adios. Thank you.
Thank you guys. See ya. Have a great day.